Hello, Madhuri. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How are you? Fine, sir. Fantastic. All right. Let's wait for the other participants. So once everybody is there, we will start the session. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Thank you. Hello, Sandeep. Hi, Srinath. Hey, hi, Aaron. Hi, Aaron. Good, good morning. morning. Very good morning. Very good morning. Uh, we are waiting for the other participants. So once uh, anyone joins, we can start the session. All right. We'll just for a cup, wait for a couple of minutes. Okay. All right. So meanwhile, I just switch few of the questions and uh, you can get some information, right? Sure, please. Okay. So what are the competitors there for the Power BI? And uh, where, we where we need to learn Power BI? Uh, you're asking that which technologies are competitors to Power BI, right? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. So there is one major competitor for Power BI. It is Tableau. Okay, so that is going to be one of the major competitor. And there are, though it is a competitor, there are 
good amount of advantages and disadvantages in Tableau. And at the same time, there are advantages and disadvantages in Power BI as well. One of the biggest advantage of Power BI is for a learner, from a learner perspective, it, uh, it is free. Okay, but Tableau is not free. Tableau, you have to purchase Tableau and then only, only then you will be able to uh, use it. But in the case of Power BI, Power BI is absolutely free. You can directly download it from the Microsoft website. Tableau is a standalone software. I mean, Tableau is a company by its own and its data visualization. It is all great. Power BI comes from Microsoft, right? So it is, it fits very well within the Microsoft ecosystem. Microsoft 365, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft SharePoint, Microsoft Power Tools, etc. So it just has a wider gamut of technologies that are already existing with us. So if you are well, good enough for good enough in Microsoft technologies, like example, Microsoft Excel, then probably uh, you can have a bit of a forward bit of a forward understanding of Power BI in certain aspects, not every aspect, in certain aspects. I hope I answered your question. Yeah, yeah yes, yes. Thank you. Fantastic. All right. So, well, uh, let's start the session, uh, guys. So, um, we are already 10 minutes up the time. So, let us uh, start with uh, today's session. So, first, before uh, starting today's session, I just wanted to give a quick introduction about myself. Mm, my name is Arun and I'm a data scientist. I'm working for a reputed MNC as a lead data scientist. I'm having good amount of experience in data analytics, business intelligence, and data science. Probably been training of students in the same technologies of analytics, business intelligence, and programming. Okay. So I would like to take this opportunity to thank you and welcome you uh, to this demo session, wherein we will try to get a very comprehensive understanding of the technology, obviously that is Power BI, and also the things that are associated with that technology. We'll, we'll try to get a comprehensive understanding on that. All right. So that is a quick introduction. And uh, I would like to pass it on to you so that you can also have a introduction so that we can understand each other better. Here, uh, this is Srinath Janayani. I have five plus years of experience in IT domain and I'm an equity research analyst. So the, uh, we are using right now Power BI and uh, the Power Tool. So I want to learn it and I want to excel my income. Thank you. Thank you so much. That sounds good. Yeah. Can I have some, the next person, Sandeep, can I hear it from you? Hello, Sandeep. Oh, okay. Uh, Madhuri, can I have an introduction? Mm, sir, actually, I was doing uh, in educational field. Uh, now, right now, I want to shift to software. That's why I have learned Excel, and now I am. I want to learn Power BI. Okay, madam. That sounds good. Problem. So, uh, you are uh, a teacher? No, sir. Admin, administrative side, sir. Office oh, side. Right. You are into the office side. Ah, admin, admin in charge. Okay, fine. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. No problem. Um. All right. So, let me share my screen.
All right. So, uh, can you guys confirm if you are able to see my screen? Yes, yes. sir. All right. So, as I told you, uh, we are going to discuss about Power BI, obviously, and also the technologies that encompass uh, encompass this stuff. Stuff in encompass this um uh, encompass power bi so when we talk about power bi when we talk about power bi what are we actually talking about we will look into that and inside power bi we will look into the various aspects of the technology inside the software what are the various aspects of the technology because by the end power bi is a software is an application where we where we use various methods or various technologies from some sort of domain and then we transform that into something else right so it is not it is though it is very important to learn the software as as to learn the software as a um, what you say as a standalone thing it is also very important to understand to understand the area in which the software is actually placed all right it is very important to understand the area in which the software is actually placed. Okay. So when I say the area, what is what actually do I mean is the area in which the so this Power BI operates is majorly into data. All right. So when I talk about data, what am I actually referring to? See, for example, any organization, any organization per se, has generates data, right? Has a data stored about it. For example, there is data in an organization. There is data about employees. There is data about their products, about their sales, about their um, about their marketing, about their profits, about their portfolios. This is a data that that any organization holds. Okay, so. In the cycle of data, in the in the life cycle of a data, from the data preparation, from the data identification, then we have data preparation, and then the data is stored. Okay, so these are the these are the stages of data, right? So what happens when 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 the data is actually identified when the when the data is actually collected from various from various sources, and when the data is stored? That does not end the picture, right? The data has to tell a story. Okay. For example, you are having a data, you are having a data about your about your employees, right? You want to apply, you want to, you want to have a review towards the end of the year. You, you are having an annual review. What will you do? For example, you are having this data on an Excel. If you want to get some insights from that data, we use a pivot table, right? We pivot that data. We pivot that data. We see which employee is performing how. What is the average performance of an employee? What is the average rating of an employee? Okay. We'll see, we see, we see how, what is the duration of the employee inside the company. And then on basis of that, I decide my hike or the appraisal. See, what, what are we actually doing? What are we actually doing? We are having... Just a second. Okay. What are we actually doing? We are actually having data. We are having info. We are having information in the form of a data. And that information, I've just given an example of a of an Excel, right? You're, you're having an Excel spreadsheet, and then you convert that Excel spreadsheet into a pivot table. Right. And what does a pivot do? Pivot summarizes the information, right? What 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 is a pivot table do? Pivot summarizes the information. For example, I'm having a, I'm having a data. Simply, I'm having a data about the students in a class. For example, in a in a class of hundred student, sixty students are female and forty students are male. Right. And for example, my quick insight from the data would be okay. In this class, my summary of this data would be how many students count of the students count of the female students and count of the male students. Then from that, I can have an inference that, okay, female students are more than male students. This is some insightful information that I get 
can can i get from a simple data set right and how i use that information is up to the stakeholder is up to the person who is seeing this data okay well let's come to the example of a business okay so now when when i'm having so much of humongous amounts of data the data is raw the data is raw i mean the data is sit just sitting in the table it is not pro it is not giving me any insights right it is not giving me insights but obviously the major purpose of it major purpose of data is to give insights it is it is it 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 is the duty of the data right the data is bound to tell us a story and in fact in fact business intelligence is all about getting that story that is the reason we call it business intelligence okay so we are having data we are having data we are trying to get insights out of that data and try to make decisions by the end of the day so business intelligence existed earlier also business intelligence existed earlier also but why the but the domain the dimension of the business intelligence have, have changed in the recent times because the most the, the obvious reason of that is the amount of data that we are generating every day just look at just 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 randomly look at the things that are around you in your room okay we are having our mobile phones we are having our laptops we are having our smart tvs we are having our smart fridge smart refrigerator we are having our smart ac we are having our amazon alexa we are having a smart watch probably just you can imagine in fact we are having our bikes smart bikes bikes are having data nowadays bikes can store songs so from as we are moving forward in technology what we are actually doing is we are generating so much of data when we are generating so much of data it is very important that we gather summary from the data as well okay so why do we get summary summarization of data why is it useful why is the why are the insight useful for us to take decisions to take decisions that is known as data driven decision making that's known as data driven decision making that is the reason we call the whole thing as business intelligence okay that is the reason that we call as business intelligence so i'll explain i'll give you a very brief understanding more on this concept for example for example i am having a monthly i'm having a monthly review meeting with my vice president okay my vice president wants to my vice president wants to have an overview about the performance of various teams inside my company various domains inside my company that is he wants to know the performance of hr the performance of technology the performance of the the performance of operations the performance of asset management people management he wants to review everything okay and and earlier what we used to do we used to put this up in a powerpoint presentation we used to put this up in a powerpoint presentation we used to have pivot tables we used to have very we used to use very other reporting tools other reporting tools now the catch here is the catch here is though we can have a static reporting tool for example like a power ppt or a microsoft pivot table how that is different from this business intelligence is that i want to create something that is real time on spot right today what happened today what is the status today it told you every day we are generating data every day we are generating every moment that we are generating data every moment i want to see because because basis on my sale every day i am going to decide how my how my discounting how my sales would be for the next day for the next week so i want quick decisions i want quick decisions today i rolled out a discount on something but the sale did not happen the marketing was struggling there was no sale there were there were no website hits only if i get the data on that particular day real time 
on that particular day, real time, I will be able to take a decision, right? Okay, I think there is something that I need to change with regards to this. There's something that I need to change because it. Okay, so when we are talking about business intelligence, when we are talking about business intelligence, what we are actually telling, we are telling about humongous amounts of data, huge volume of data. Okay, huge volume of data and also the data which is real time. Obviously, when I talk about huge volume of data, what I actually mean is the data, for example, is ca cannot be coming from a single source. Okay, imagine a team, imagine a team. In a team, we are having team leaders. We are having a team, we are having, we are, we are getting employee data. We are getting the data of an agent from the backend team. That is the team, the, the data analytics team. Right. We are having the attendance data with the team leader. Two types. The team leader is maintaining the data in a Google Sheet. The team leader is maintaining the data in Excel Sheet. Right. For example, which associate is available now? Which associate is not available today? Which associate is probable to go to a leave? In the next 15 days, which associate is probable to do overtime and which associate would be present? Which associate would be present in the office? He's having he's having the data which a team leader maintains, right? In the Google Sheet. Also, along with this, along with this, I'm also having the data that is coming from the backend teams. From coming from the backend teams. It says which associate, for example, the moment you the moment you talk to a customer service executive of a company, immediately you get a message. Hey, you just spoke to so-and-so. Can you rate us? How would you rate the experience? The moment you click 4.5 or 5, that data is stored somewhere inside the internal database. Right? That data comes from another source. Now, two sources. Right? The source that a team leader is maintaining, the source that I'm having from a backend table. Now, two sources, what I can do, I want I want my manager, the, the boss of the team leader, want to have a look at this as to say, okay, uh, for example, that person is Ganesh. Okay, Ganesh, I want to look, I want to have a look at how, what is going to be my headcount or what is going to my operations bandwidth, how much will, how much activity that we can handle in the coming 15 days. I want to have a live data for that i want to have a live feed for that right for that i can pivot a chart for today and then tomorrow that becomes obsolete that does not work right for this purposes what we can do this business intelligence tools have, are are so amazing that it is not about you can get you can get a single view I mean, you can get a single viewpoint from two different data sources. Not only two, in fact, there are multiple data sources that we can get information onto one. And trust me, the, the interesting thing is this data can be refreshed at a spe as a specified time, almost real time, I would say. Not real time, really, but almost real time. The data can be coming from a cloud platform. The data can be sitting inside your laptop right now. The data can be coming from a, a basic Google Sheet, basic CSV file, Excel file. The data can be coming from a website. So the, everything, the data that is coming from is transformed and probably modeled. And are, we are able to create the pivot chart. So right now, let's talk about that only. Something similar to a pivot table. What I am solving here? Number one, I'm solving the huge volume of the data. Number two, I'm solving the different sources of the data. Number three, I'm eliminating the problem of I'm eliminating the problem of a real time, the lag, right? I'm having almost a real time data. So volume of data insights this is what we hear always intelligence this data driven decision making this is what we hear okay till now do you guys have any question no I no sir it... no sir fantastic amazing so let's go forward
ओके सो सो व्हेन नाउ व्हेन वी हियर पावर बीआई when we just google for power bi or something like that when it hear from when we hear it uh, hear about it from our peer something like that what we what do we usually do what do we usually see we usually see some charts right bar charts pie charts etc and etc see gantt charts we see line plots but this is not it is only 10% of the story okay this is just only 10% of the story 90% 90% is what i have mentioned just now that your knowledge or the capability of the software the capability of the software to get information the capability of the software to transform the transform the information right you get the information you transform it you are getting some information from the website and you are having the the same kind of information on your google sheet somewhere you have to tell the software that this hey power bi both of this data sources make the same point belong to the same person belong to the same department something like that right so you need you should be able to try should be able to model the data right before you modeling what do you do in case if the data is not going to be clean if my data is coming from a website wherein i am taking registrations for a specific event if we ask age somebody is entering 35 in words somebody is entering 35 somebody is not entering anything somebody is entering 0 somebody is entering 120 i have to transform the data before i just feed this data into my mod data modeling stage right so my capacity to import this data my capacity to transform this data and my capacity to model this data becomes 90% of the story only 10% is about visualization i want to make that very clear to you guys want to make that very clear to you that only 10% when we called about the reason why power bi the reason why power bi is very competitive today the reason why power bi is very popularly used is its humongous capacity to do this operations to do the 90% of the operations that other other platform does not offer the real time data transformation it is having a powerful technology in the back end to do this kind of operations these operations are usually called etl okay these operations are usually called etl when i say etl it means that extract transform and load what am i extracting anyone what am i extracting data structure we are extracting data from different sources very good what are we transforming we trimming the data we modifying the data exactly we are what we are doing is once we are extracting the data we are trimming the data we are modifying the data we are making the data flexible we are we are making sure that there are not the data is not the data is clean right? there are not spaces in the data something like that we use, we use all sorts of cleaning operations right so that is what we do that is what we are doing what is loading loading is where we we have all this data we have planned to use this data somewhere so we load this data inside a source an intermediate source we load this data inside an intermediate source okay we load this data in a intermediate source so power there are tools inside them inside in the market etl tools i think you people have heard of it etl tools etl testing etl informatica etc now what this tools actually do altrix what this tools actually do the operations that i have just mentioned but power bi has them inbuilt inside them 
that is also one of the edge of power bi over tableau guys important that is also one of the edge of power bi over tableau and now this is 90% and trust me and trust me it is going to be very interesting it is going to be very interesting you should because you will be exposed to a lot of technologies in lot of technical terminologies you will be introduced to a lot of beautiful methods beautiful methods beautiful terminologies while we are doing all these operations while we are doing all these operations maybe there are data data extraction operation data transformation operation data modeling operation it's going to be very interesting trust me that is the that is my favorite part in power bi actually now to the part that we have see we see everywhere the visualization part nevertheless though it is only 10% of the story power bi visualization is also very powerful all right it is having a wide range of charts okay it is having a wide range of charts it is having a wide range for example i am having a chart to visualize something on the map right bar chart line charts i can go on there are multiple no doubt about it they are good they are all fine okay so visualization is one aspect of power bi now another quick small aspect of power bi is probably its capability to embed itself inside websites okay for example you can design a website you can have a website and then you can embed okay you can embed that inside you can embed power bi inside that website okay the thing that you have created you can embed that now power bi can be shared okay power bi can be shared with multiple users when you are we use power bi desktop we call it as power bi desktop we call power bi we, we call power the the software where we actually create power bi reports we call this reports is called power bi desktop and obviously if you want to show this report to somebody in your organization somebody inside the organization you have to publish this report it has to be accessible to all right so you publish it on something called as power bi service okay you publish this on something called as a power bi service so power publishing a report into a power bi service publishing a report into a power bi service and then managing accesses to various person for example i'm having financial data okay i'm having financial data as to as to how much the company has made which team has made how much revenue i'm also having some other team created a report of the operation somebody has created a report about the other technologies or other other processes other other things for example i told you agent how many agents are on average working for the operations data i want the people of operations not to see the data of finance how do i do it i control the data so controlling the data access security wise managing the data managing your reports also becomes a aspect of power bi okay so when you are when you are saying that you are giving when you are when you are developing visibility when you are developing visibility it is also very important it is also very important to control access right so that is achieved by power bi okay so these are the few few these are this are a wide overview is a wide overview about power bi any questions still now guys and how are you feeling like are you able to catch what i am actually trying to tell here yeah yes sir we clearly understand what you are trying to explain 
fantastic fantastic that sounds good right? thanks for the contribution thanks for the contribution uh, so uh, i would like to show some slides on the same okay whatever i have mentioned it is there in the slide so i'll just go take you through the slides that i have created so you can just go through the slides i will explain the various things about the slide and then at last we will look into probably we'll look into how our teaching is going to be how our teaching is going to be and uh, how we can take it forward all right yes or no guys yeah fantastic all right okay so as i told you earlier one of the one of the one of the most important concept also when we are talking about power bi is visual, business intelligence she has become very accessible to us right for example you are having um if you know paisa bazar anyone of anyone heard of paisa bazar no this is the first time doing some Paisa Bazaar is a website, okay? Paisa Bazaar is a website wherein if you log in, it will show your credit reports. It will show you how much your Sybil score was, how much your Equifax score was, how much was your experience score was, etc. Okay? So in that, if you see the website, there is a visualization. It shows that last year it was this much, this year it is this year it, it is this much. Good. So for a normal user, like you need not be technical, technical to access BI, business intelligence. You need not be technical to access business intelligence. So that is that is what I say that business intelligence is accessible to everyone these days. Earlier in the beginning, business the business intelligence was only confined to IT professionals. Then it became to managers. Then it came to managers. I gave you the example of the company, right? Just a second. One second. Okay. So um so let's look into the same so this was the first wave of technical bi we call it the first wave of technical bi right and then it's the second wave first it used to be first it used to be from a technical person from it has to be it department then to the end user right then an it department has to be there in the between and then we need to use complex uh queries or something like that or visualization technologies to do that that's called the first wave of bi technical bi and we have the second wave of technical bi that's called a self-service bi it became easy right? for example if you see the interface of power bi it is i would say it is not hard it is very easy it is very simple you can learn it it looks very appealing to see okay very intuitive very interesting right new terminologies new features etc so in the process what is what is what is actually happening what is actually happening is it is becoming more and more user friendly it is becoming more and more user friendly let's call the second wave now this is a final wave third wave end user bi so now the power it is accessible to everybody all right now the common bi challenges can you can you uh... Give a moment. In the second wave, analyst to uh, end user, right? You can see yeah. it's a IT to end user in the first wave. Right. How it is will be useful for IT to end user the straight away and the way the analyst involved in this. Yeah. Now, when I say the second wave of self-service BI, when I say analyst to end user, it means that as I told you, as the as something as as the data as is increasing okay the complexity of data the volume of data is increasing new roles of have come inside the market that is called as data analyst data engineer etc 
So now it is not that an IT department, a software engineer has to design something for the end user. There can be a person inside. So I'm analyzing the data. There is an analyst and then it goes to the end user. When I say end user, it means that the stakeholder, it can be anybody, right? So earlier it used to be an IT to end user. Now it is an IT. Now it need not be IT. It can be an analyst. An analyst can have access to these tables. Analyst can have access to these sources. Then he can create a data, create a visualization and have it to the end user. Then in the third wave, it is probably, as I told you, the feasibility, the accessibility for this has increased. I hope that is clear. Is it clear? Yes, yes. Uh... Okay. See, end-to-end -end view. Data often resides in disparate locations. Of course, right? So I told that there are there are complex data. So some data is in an Excel sheet, the data is in a website, the data is probably um, uh, probably inside the cloud platform. So it is it is very important that we get all this data together. Okay. So end to end view the data and multiple data sources, right? The right data is also always important for the right users, right? For example, as I told you, the director of human resources need to have the data that is related to human resources. The, data, the finance director perhaps is not really interested to look into the asset utilization of the company. He wants, he wants to view the data that is confined to finance, maybe, right? And the vice versa, right? an asset manager, an asset director, asset management director is not so much, would not be so much interested to look into the data of human resources, right? So we have roles defined in businesses. In the same way, when we are designing something, when we are designing something, we can probably you know, define the accessibility for these roles as well, right? That is offered in Power BI. So Power BI is a cloud-based business analytics service. If you are you're seeing the right-hand side, you are seeing something called as a dashboard. So I told you, right, if you can create reports. So what is a dashboard? Dashboard is nothing but a, a set of reports. For example, I'm having 10 reports. From these 10 reports, I don't, I have different visualizations. In one report, I'm having one chart in another report i'm having different chart etc etc from from each report i pull the things that i am actually looking for and i create a dashboard that is called as a dashboard now you're seeing on the right hand side is called power bi service okay so it's not a power bi desktop it is power bi service where the power bi reports are actually published and then that reports have become a dashboard and then you are seeing the numbers you are seeing the charts first you are on the top, you are seeing the 6.31K. So it is saying that the daily number of cars, detail total revenue. So look at this from an operation standpoint, from a managerial standpoint, from a management standpoint, right? So you need a complete picture of this. And this is, has to be, I told you, the complexity involves multiple data sources, real-time, almost real-time refresh, etc. Now, Next, key benefits, so many different content packs consisting of dashboards and repair uh, reports, real-time dashboard updates, the dashboard gets really, I mean, they're having ways to how to refresh the data. And then there are, it is secure, of course. And one more interesting thing about Power BI, there is something called as a natural language query. Now, what is a natural language query? So this is also a differentiator. Natural language query is not present in Tableau. What is natural language query? Power BI, there is a feature wherein you can ask, you can just type in a message. Who, which department had highest hiring? Which department has highest hirings for the quarter three. 
power your power bi dashboard will be able to give you a answer it's just you need to just type in your question it's like called in a chatbot it is like a chatbot yes correct it will give you so this is called a natural language query you ask the data for example there might be why because there might be a visualization there i've showed you right on the right hand side there or you see on the this thing right i'm having a pie i'm having a uh, what you say meter completion meter i have i'm having a bar chart i'm having a column chart but there might be something that just clicks on my mind that okay i want this information but this information that but that visualization is not designed by the power bi developer i don't want that every time i don't want that visualization every time that is the reason it did not develop good but i want to have a look at it how do i do it i can't go to the data source and look for it right you can just chat type that message if the day, if if the day, if the question you are asking is within the ambit of the data source it uses machine learning and artificial intelligence for this so if it is in, inside your ambit inside the ambit of the data so it uses some nlp that is called natural language processing and there are some backend technologies for that and then it gives you the desired result just like chat gpt right something like that okay yes yes so it will give you right? the related queries in the the, the dashboard it it gives so you the related the keywords yes it will it will give you the related numbers okay now integration with familiar microsoft i told you right so the reason power bi is also competitive with tableau is we are already having a a ton of microsoft applications right microsoft azure right microsoft yeah. sharepoint etc microsoft it's very Excel. easy to end user or something even don't know about the power bi they can use it exactly easy. third wave of power bi right third wave yeah. of power <laughs> so if in fact in fact when we go into the actual classes you will see how interesting this is right so just to win some kind of not everything but when you see that complex thing are complex things are just achieved by drag and drop you feel interesting oh it has done this task in just this click right so it becomes very feasible it becomes very compatible for us to use okay so i told you at when it is when it is easy when it is user friendly it is not so complex fast deployment it is all it's sec secure integrated right existing it is so here i told you right so in the left hand side you are seeing the different data sources okay you are having the different data sources that right? you are having data from salesforce you are having on premises data like when i say on premises data that is the data that is already existing with you right then your organization you have corporate data sources then you can able to get the chance to learn uh, saas as well yeah uh, you would not be exposed to the saas actually but uh, probably you can dive deep into that if you are interested but actually we don't uh, because it is we will come across this concept only we are talking about data sources as to okay these are the data sources and this is how we can import data from the data sources all right so we are having azure services example azure sql analytics so when i am talking about data sources i'm just talking that i'm i'm just telling that i'm able to make sure that i'm getting the information from this data sources then i told you right excel excel files and then you have power bi desktop files as well Yes, SAS uh, is like same SQL or how it is. SAS, SAS is called as a software as a service. Okay, right. So SAS is nothing but a software as a service. Now, what software does it offer as a service basically? So, for example, I'm having technologies of um, a data technology. For example, I'm having Salesforce, you take it. Now I'm having the data of the sales information. 
right now this data is being collected this data is being transformed and this data is being pushed into some other some other database some other major database okay and before the data is pushed into another database there are some operations that i need to do on this data right for example i want to understand i, I want to understand uh, to which which different sources that this data has to go before it is fed into the main database it has to go to testing it has it has to go to it has to go to data testing i don't mean the real testing it has to go to data testing it has to go to uh, probably what we call as etl testing so it is kind of a middleware wherein wherein we get the we have the, the there are companies that offer you back end support for the data for the for the softwares and on top of that back end support we have the softwares called salesforce etc so it is simply so we can call it power bi is also a saas platform saas because first up this is a cloud based cloud based service right so in the back end what we have we are having data visualization we are having data modeling data extraction etc etc on a, for this we are having a software support what is that software that software is visualization dashboarding okay so power bi is also called as one of the saas tool it can we can we can call that okay so on the right side uh, you are seeing power bi service uh, the dashboards are live you have visualization reports data sets natural language query sharing and collaboration right so so told you right so shareability preparation exploration reporting same thing see no matter which industry you are power bi is for obviously data is data is relevant to every industry it is not confined to only one industry right so for a business user for a data analyst it is important for a bi professional it's important so different users different users have different use cases of this data for an analyst i might look for something else for a power bi developer you might be looking for something else probably a person is sitting in the manual position looking for something else right as i told you power bi has flexibility to integrate integrate its reports and dashboards inside websites right it is useful for developers to integrate applications with power bi to create real time develop dashboards custom visuals etc right i told you right line number 4 exploring with qna so qna is nothing but our natural language query obviously power bi also has a mobile application wherein you can real time view the data dashboard inside your mobile phone so sharing and yeah so what is a few slides you can access power bi with power bi service it is supported in all this this thing see so these are the building blocks of power bi okay so as i told you very importantly data set data data source is a building block and then once the data is there what do we create we create report okay what is it it's a major question so in in interviews what is the difference between a power bi report and power bi dashboard sir power bi report is something that we create in our power bi desktop application dashboard will be a combination of different reports okay. it's generally so people usually confuse with power bi reports and dashboards they think it is the same thing no power bi reports and dashboards are different power bi reports are created in power bi desktop in the application and once that reports are published in power bi service you create dashboard so report but dashboard is a combination of different reports to analyze right. the information that's right exactly see creating reports a report is based on a single data set or a single data not data set but a single viewpoint 
So a report consists of reports consist of one or more pages. Each page can be named. It's all technical. I just wanted to show you the thing. So that is the reason I imported that in the slide. So you can obviously you have reports, you can filter them, you can sort them, and do a ton of operations. Right. These are the various filter operations that you have. We'll look into this in detail when we are having our classes, guys. I'll show you this in the actual software. But for an intuitive, for a curious mind, I just wanted to. So this is how we're having different charts, bar chart, column chart, combo, scatter plot, waterfall chart, donut, funnel, etc. Also, also, when you are importing, when you it's not that you are only having these kind of charts. There is flexibility to import custom charts as well in Power BI. So that is also that we look into that if we can do that. So I told you dashboards. What is a dashboard? Dashboards display tiles in a single canvas. See, second line. A dashboard can be based on one or more data sets, meaning one or more reports. Okay. So from one or more reports, I'm I'm getting one or the other tile this this things that we call tiles okay so this things that we are seeing here these are basically called tiles tile one tile two tile three tile four so different report one one tile i'm importing and then it's not so these are more uh technical things so we will see non-data related tiles can also be included in the dashboard so when i am showing data it is not only that i'm showing numbers all the time I can show web content, I can show videos, I can show images, text. Videos as well. Okay. Oh, you can show videos as well. Okay. Relevant videos only, okay? It's not burden to the database, which means it's what, whatever the application we use, is that so much fast? For example, when I say I'm going to show videos, it is not like I'm showing videos from the database. In fact, probably I can embed a YouTube I can get a video, a standalone video from somewhere and then put that inside the dashboard. Yes. Maybe your question it's a basic is, understanding of the dashboard. That's it. That's it. Your question is very legit because if I if I'm feeding in something data inside the dashboard, uh, video inside the dashboard, then obviously it will be slow. It will be a burden for the dashboard. Right. So it is not like a the video that is inside that sitting that is inside sitting sitting inside the uh, database but in fact the video that is like which we can say that okay this, these are the fields uses dashboard inside way that how how this dashboard is useful etc very well said yeah so so this i told you right so dashboards uh, again q a very interesting so for example you are you ask like this show show so and so Show so and so. It's same like uh, SQL queries. Ah, yes. But so the show net total revenue by month. If you say you get the you get the data. See. There's a mobile application also. So you can configure your dashboard to a phone. There are various technical technical things inside the Power BI. We'll See, these are additional capabilities of Power BI, right? So you can have a SSRS reports inside Power BI. You can have Excel ranges. You can have Excel elements. You can have analyze. There's something called as analyze in Excel. Row level security, data alerts, Cortana for Power BI. You know Cortana, right? So Cortana is a uh, software for uh, Microsoft, like a Siri for Apple. So that actually yeah. works for. Uh, power this is kind of booth. Correct bot chatbot. So you have dashboards, etc. So this is how 
the, the power bi dashboard actually looks guys so this is the uh, real time view of dashboards and then these are we'll go everything in detail we'll go everything from scratch okay so everything that we see here we, we are going to look this is the databases azure online services There's a direct query mode also in Power BI, wherein you can directly write SQL query from the database and then you can get the information. Okay, so again, this is basically, I told you, right, data modeling operations. So you can join tables, left join, right, inner join, etc. Right, we are having, we'll see everything in detail. So these are the, so in Power BI, there is one important concept called as DAX. Okay, so DAX is again very interesting. So for example, it is not every time required that the data that you want is there in a table and then you are pivoting that table or putting that as a visual. You have to create new data every time. You have to create a new visualization every time. I mean, you have to create custom data custom data fields, custom data sources based upon certain conditions, right? So that can be achieved with a powerful technology, powerful language, expressions, I would say, which is called as DAX. It's called as data analysis expressions. So it has a lot of functions that are there in Excel and on top of that, very additional powerful functions. And um, so it is some of the, it is also one of the important. So we have calculated columns to achieve that. So yeah, so these are, so these are the different types of reports that we can have. So Right, so uh i mean it is infinite okay so the way we can leverage power bi is is phenomenal there are so many technologies in power bi there are there there are so many ways that we can use power bi right the the dax functionalities that we have are so much right? they are they offer a very powerful way of data modeling data transformation data visualization Right. DAX also becomes one of the most important concept while we are learning Power BI. We'll look into all the DAX functionalities. We'll look into complex DAX functions and we will look into the basic DAX functions. And also, and also DAX is useful to create to create a tables in by the end. Right. So for example, you have tables, you have three, four tables, and then on basis of that, you want to create something a temporary table inside the power bi ecosystem you can do that with dax so it is very powerful all right so that is about power bi from my side guys and uh, coming about the sessions so we'll have a comprehensive sessions we'll focus a lot on practice and fundamental understanding of the concepts okay as i told you power bi is a software and this software leverages various methodologies and various various methodologies and various concepts of data management databases right data visualization that's a technology for example you have scatter you have scatter plot that is a data visualization you have bar chart in microsoft excel you have the bar chart in tableau you have bar chart in google data studio you have bar chart in google data studio right yeah. So, so the concept of bar is same across all these platforms, right? Yes, sir. Yes. So, I, I think you, you, you are getting what I'm trying to tell. The concept is similar across. So, if you understand bar chart as a concept, if you understand bar chart as a concept, then you will, then you will probably understand everything where the bar is, bar chart is applied, right? So, whether it is Google Cloud Platform 
whether it is Google Cloud Platform or whether it is uh, Power BI or whether it is Tableau or it can be anything. Yeah, it's matter is just we how we feeding the data into the bar. Correct. Right? Exactly. So when I say that I'm using data modeling, I'm using I'm I'm going I'm going to use data I'm going to use data modeling to accomplish a certain functions. We are using something called as left join, right join, right? So the concepts of left join, right join are similar across SQL. The similar across any programming, I mean, any programming packages, right? The same are there in Power BI as well. It is not, it is not that we are learning it in Power BI. Well, we love, we look into that in Power BI, but we will fundamentally understand these concepts. And then once we have the conceptual understanding of this, we will try to implement the same in Power BI so that no matter which software you are using in the future, it should be very thorough with the concept. If I say data modeling, if I say if I say that uh, uh, I am trying to have a one-to-one -one relationship between a two tables, it is scheme. It is the same. If you are in, if you are doing that in an RDBMS or if you are doing it as in a Python package, it is going to be the same. Or if you are going in Google Cloud, if you are going if you are going doing that in a big data or Power BI, it is the same. So we will understand those concepts first and then we'll leverage that into the actual application. Okay. So application wise, application wise, Power BI concept in this ambit, no? Power BI is like a tip of the iceberg. Okay. Tip of the iceberg. The thing that is lying inside is all these concepts. Right. So when I say the 90% of the thing is modeling, 90% of the thing is transformation, etc. Modeling is a concept. We need to know that it is not only new to Power BI. It is not only there in Power BI. It is there in already. It, it is there everywhere. Our databases, databases are common. Power BI also there are databases. So we'll understand that first, and then we will leverage that into Power BI. We leverage that into Power BI. Okay, and obviously we'll spend a lot of time understanding. We we'll spend a lot of time understanding uh, the visualizations as well. We'll take a good amount of time um, spending on DAX, so that requires practice as well. So we we'll look into how we, how will the learning path will be, etc. And um, my my thing is, since we are only three members inside the group, we will have the sessions very interactive. Okay, we'll have this. We'll have the sessions as a one-on-one -on -one sessions almost, right? So it's very small batch, right? We'll have a one-on-one -on -one sessions, so that it it does not feel like this is a class. It just feels like okay, we are all together working on something. We are learning new things. If you're having any doubt, you can bring it to me. We'll discuss it really quick. Then you can go forward. A typical way of doing things. We'll do that. All right. So that would be my commitment from my side. And um, uh, that's all, guys. I mean, that's all I have to tell you at the moment. Uh, I mean, from this discussion, uh, do you have any questions? Or also, do you have any questions in general related to analytics or data science or something? I'll be happy to answer. And, um, yeah, so any questions, anybody? No, sir. Okay. So, I hope... uh, one more thing. Uh, see, yeah. after completion of this course, how can we get the professional certification, which means a uh, NLE, BI analyst or like? Uh, so, the course come. I mean, the institute will offer you the relevant certification for Power BI, actually. So, what the title will be on the certification is you need but to is check that. But that not useful for the but the professional wise, right? Uh, which means we can't uh, mention in our resume somewhere. Uh, why do you think that we cannot mention that in the resume? See, after the certification, which means the, who are developed this software and who are dealing with software, right? No, it is not. Which means. 
power bi uh, microsoft certification i'm trying what i'm trying my oh if you are if you are uh, for if you want to have a microsoft power bi certification then you have to write a microsoft certification exam only then you get that software uh, certification okay. okay if you write that exam it will be if you that write if you write that microsoft power bi certification exam and then you have qualified for that exam then irrespective of which domain you work earlier you can mention that inside your resume mm -hmm. yeah. you can mention that of course the certification that you get after the completion of this course it depends i mean you need to check what title they are offering you on the course but by the end of the day power how do, who becomes a power bi developer power bi developer is a power bi developer is nobody who creates power bi dashboards okay so power bi developer is not different from a power bi there is no existence such as power bi it's a power bi developer only a power bi developer i would say is more experienced in power bi a person who takes power bi training does not become a power bi developer as such and no no training can make a power bi developer a senior power bi that power bi developers are only made by experience i myself have worked on power bi so when you say power bi developer so it means that you are basically telling that you have worked only on power bi for a good amount of time also you can be a power bi expert more than a developer other than having a title of power bi developer you can be a you can be a data analyst you can be a business analyst and also work on power bi always in your role right so that is power bi but by the end of the day you have to we have to explore what all are the different concepts that are there when you are studying power bi and in that concept how much deep are we learning so depending on that whenever you are attending an interview the questions will be there depending on that uh, you are depending on that your job position will be defined so that is it i hope the doubt is clear sridhar yeah yes and one more thing see i am uh... eagerly and i want to learn sql and power bi mm -hmm. so so my question is and from your i want you from your suggestion okay once i complete the sql and then jump into the power bi and i can able to do the parallelly both of them exactly i think you were there in the yesterday's sql demo as well right yes sir oh, okay yes i actually remember so what i would suggest to is your is a very best combination to learn sql and power bi okay so best combination to learn sql and power bi because these are everything i mean sql i mentioned in yesterday's demo i hope also right so how powerful sql is so now from the sql then your power bi it's a good combination and also what you can do is you can learn these things parallelly definitely you can learn this things parallelly and when you are good take i would my personal opinion would be 3 3 hour 3 months of time you to, it will take for you to be good at this technologies 3 months of time give 3 months of time to yourself for power bi and sql once you have once you have this time i'll guide you to some projects power bi projects some real time projects maybe like real time projects as in i will give you some data sets and we will discuss as to how we can create power bi reports on that data set once you feel confident once you feel confident that okay i'm good at power bi now and i'm good at sql also at the moment then what you can do is you told that you are already exposed to power bi in your office right yeah No, I'm But, not that much. This I can able to see the reports and uh, no problem. Try to report, yeah. try, from that standpoint only. Try to explore that more. And obviously, when you are switching your company, you can mention that you worked on Power BI and SQL. Okay. You can you can happily mention that. No, no, no. You need not you not worry about that. Provided you are very good with the concepts. Provided you have done some 
assignments provided you have have some like you take some sample data set and then you do that actually it is it is very good that you are already exposed to the power bi even though it is a report no matter even though it is a report no matter it will help you it will help you it will help you that okay you have it will create and it will give you an edge that if you know something related to power bi so then in the next in your next organization you can tell that you have worked on power bi you have worked on excel advanced excel etc that should be that should not be a problem i hope i answered your question yeah yes yes sir thank you welcome and uh, any other questions sandeep any any questions from your side all right i hope um we are aligned on these concepts okay so looking forward guys so looking forward and uh, let's meet at the classes and probably we'll have an extension to what we have discussed today and uh, we will take it up from there all right thank you okay sir thank you thank you very much thank you very much bye bye